Welcome back to the NCASE V6 to V7 webinar series. During the next few minutes, we will complete this webinar series by reviewing the V7 investigation process from beginning to end. I will then give you a preview of our upcoming NCASE version 705 release. Finally, we will review all the different resources you have at your disposal to assist you in making the move to V7. Now, if you've missed parts 1, 2, or 3 of this webinar series, you can find them on the guidance software website at www.incase.com. With that, let's get started. The V7 approach to digital investigations is designed to allow examiners to complete investigations as efficiently as possible by automating tasks that have traditionally been handled manually. Now, as the amount of evidence associated with cases continues to skyrocket and case backlogs increase, examiners need new ways to save time during the investigation process, and that is what V7 provides. The examiner is still, and will always be, the most important part of the process. But with V7, we are providing these trained professionals with new ways to attack their cases. Now let's review the investigation process in version 7. To begin, an examiner needs to create a case. In V7, case creation involves selecting a case template and defining locations for evidence cache storage and configuring case backup settings. Now the template selected will drive both the bookmark folder structure and the resulting case report. Remember that you can always modify the bookmark folder structure and the case report as your investigation progresses giving you the flexibility you need to report your findings for different audiences. If you do modify these items, remember that you will want to save the template. You could opt to replace the existing template or save it as a brand new template. Again, the choice is yours. When it comes to case backup settings, you need to determine a location that is secure and easily accessible so that in the event you need to restore a case, you can do so quickly. Now that you have a case, you are ready to add evidence. You have many options when it comes to adding evidence, from adding an evidence file to a network preview. Now the new option we introduced in V7 is the ability to acquire smartphones directly from NCASE. To do so, you simply connect the device to your examiner machine and NCASE automatically detects the type of device you connected. Next, you select the items you wish to collect and NCASE will do the rest. All collected items are stored in a logical evidence file that is added to your case automatically. Once collected, you can review the smartphone report to get a quick idea of what resides on the phone and or process the logical evidence file just as you would any other evidence. With evidence in your case, you can begin the investigation. As I mentioned previously, at this point you can dive right in and review the evidence. You do not have to process your evidence. You can simply click on an evidence or, or select the pieces of evidence and begin the investigation. You can perform any number of tasks such as keyword searching, applying filters and conditions, bookmarking, exporting files, creating has sets, just to name a few. Now in V7 we have added new capabilities that automate many of these tasks. But to take advantage of these tasks you will want to process your evidence. So let's take a look at the evidence processor. To process evidence, you will select the piece or pieces of evidence you want to process and the individual tasks you would like to be executed against the evidence. Now here are a couple of key points to remember. You do not have to select everything at once. The processor has been designed to allow multiple processing runs against a piece of evidence. So this means you can select the items that are most important to you first such as email or internet artifacts, for example, and then come back and perform further processing. You will see, however, there that a few items have a small red flag by them. Due to the nature of processing these items, if you are going to require them, you must select these to be part of your first processing run. Now, to make it easier for you in the future, you can save your selections as a processing template. So for instance, if you're working a fraud investigation and have selected items that you will always need to be run for a fraud investigation, you can save the template for future use. Now in just a few minutes, I'll show you some great new capabilities coming in version 705 that will make processing much more flexible. Continuing forward with evidence processed, now you can dig into the results. 
you will more than likely want to perform some queries against the index, which you can do here. The index in V7 is purpose-built for forensic investigations and provides the most comprehensive indexing available. With such a comprehensive index, you can root out the information that is relevant to your investigation quickly. Now remember, you can create word and date range queries, query a specific field, and incorporate proximity searching to create queries that target exactly what you're looking for. As you complete queries, you will want to save your results. With your saved results, you can create combined result sets to filter down your findings even further. You can also use the tagging functionality to help categorize your files during your investigation, making it easy for you to work with your findings. The tagging capabilities also make it possible for others to review evidence with the InCase Review Package. The InCase Review Package allows you to easily share your findings with others who are involved in your investigation but may not be experts in InCase. With the InCase Review Package, anyone from a DA to a case agent can review data, apply tags, and send back the results of their review so you can in integrate it into case review the InCase Review Package is the easiest way to bring others into your investigation, and I encourage you to check it out yourself. As you continue your investigation, you will be bookmarking your findings. Now in V7, this also dynamically builds your report as your investigation progresses. This allows you to, at any time, review your report and share it with your team as needed. When your report is done, you can export it, saving in a number of different formats. Now with your investigation completed, you can archive your case for later use. With the built-in archiving capability in NCASE, you can be confident that when you need to access your case again, it will be a snap to bring it back to life. And that's it, a very high-level overview of the investigation process in V7. Now let me show you some of the great new features and capabilities coming in version 705. Version 705 is loaded with new features that make the process of completing investigations easier and more efficient than ever before. We have been working closely with our users to understand how they need and want to use InCase V7 and have developed new capabilities in the software. To begin, we have increased our ease of use by adding the ability to execute a condition or filter on a current view, a current device, or on all evidence. When run against a current view, the current view you're looking at in InCase, you will see a new tool, toolbar showing the filter that is in place. Now when you first apply a condition or filter, you will be switched into a table view. However, if you prefer, you can change the default view to your liking. The filters and conditions run against the current view are using the data that is loaded into memory, so applying a filter or condition will be very fast. The other benefit now with this capability is that you can view all of the metadata of the files in the current view compared to the subset that is shown in the results tab. Further, we have added the ability to refresh keyword search results while the keyword search is running. When running a raw keyword search outside of the evidence processor, you can now go to the search window and click the new refresh icon and see any keyword hits right away. Now when the search is completed, the entire result set will be shown in the results tab, but this new capability means that there's no more waiting for you to begin to review the responsive files. Another change you will notice in V7 is the ability to perform more actions from the search tab. When reviewing search results, you can now right click and copy folders add selected, or add selected items to a hash library. Now you can perform a, key, a keyword search against your search results. So the intent here is to allow you to do as much of your investigation from within the search tab. And now with these new capabilities, you can... Next, we have incorporated the ability to add hyperlinks to your case report. If you go to the case report template under documents, you can look at the format and see two new options. 
The file link option is how I add a hyperlink to my report. You will also see there's another option called hyperlink. This link to a, to a website into your report. Now when I save this report as an HTML format, I have the new option to export the files. For those of you who have been working with V7 since the initial release, you know we have continued to optimize the performance and usability of the evidence processor in every release, and version 705 is certainly no exception. In this release, you will see process processing performance that far exceeds previous releases of NCase, as well as the performance of other forensic solutions, especially on large in addition to being faster, the evidence processor now will allow you to prioritize your processing of evidence. In the processor, you will see a new column called Processing Prioritization. By clicking on the link, you will have the option to prioritize documents, pictures, and or date ranges of files for processing. You could also instruct the processor to only process the prioritized items you select meaning you will get to the results faster. This new flexibility, coupled with the improved performance, makes evidence processing in V7 better than ever. Now for our in-case enterprise and customers, we have added serverless support for AIX 6.1 and 7.1, as well as OSX serverless support for 10.7. Additionally, we have added Active Directory authentication to NCASE Enterprise, allowing organizations to incorporate their existing groups and users into the logon process in NCASE, adding another level of security. Lastly, in version 705, we are introducing electronic licenses for NCASE. For new orders, organizations will now have the option to choose the standard physical dongle or the new electronic license. The electronic license will function much like our safe cert process where information about the machine that is going to be licensed will be sent to guidance and an electronic license will be generated and sent back to the From a housekeeping perspective, when version 705 is released, all customers who are current on SMS will receive an email that includes a new cert file. Now this cert file will enable version 705, so you need to make sure you download this file so you can, you, so you can use this new version of InCase. As you can see, version 705 is continuing the evolution of InCase, providing more capabilities and features to make the investigation process as efficient as possible. Look for more information on these features on the Guidance Software website, as well as in the user documentation and release notes that will accompany the release. This concludes the V6 to V7 webinar series. Now this webinar series was conceived with one purpose. We wanted to help our V6 customers make the move to V7. From case creation to archiving, I have provided a few tips and tricks to hopefully make the transition as smooth as possible. But there is so much more that V7 can do for you and your investigations. I encourage you to review the InCase Essentials training that is available, free to all, on the Guidance Software website, as well as learn about the in-class and on-demand courses offered by Guidance Training, the Guidance Training Department to assist you in making the move to version 7.